Alrighty, folks, welcome to the 79th and final episode of my Jerusalem playthrough, where, of course, we began as the Knights of Rhodes. Uh, this episode, we will be conquering the world. It could certainly be more glamorous, as there are a lot of subjects that we have, in fact, more than our relation slots in subjects. <clears throat> it could certainly be more glamorous, this game. But it is what it is. <laughs> we set out to form Jerusalem as the Knights of Rhodes, and we were successful in doing that. But the secondary goal and achievement was to conquer the world. And that is something also that we are going to be successful in this episode. But we're getting straight into things here. I'm trying to uh, let the time run on. Because we're actually waiting for all. Uh, theoretically, we could go back into a war against Ming right now. But I'm waiting for my core to finish with Ming. And uh, we are actually cutting it pretty close. As it's 1814. Meaning there's about, what, seven years remaining in the game? Something like that. Ming has two final remaining tributaries, both of which we're at war with. So this could actually be a, uh, a short a short episode here guys as the final episode but that's just how things uh, happen to be i probably should have just played last episode out all the way my bad uh as that was relatively short i noticed as well i could have just done one long final episode uh but it is what it is We should gain Ming's colonies when we fully annex him. So they will no longer be an issue. It is just actually these nations out here. So is there somebody uh, Portuguese in Mexico? Is there somebody coming out here? Let's do Louisiana because it just takes one tick there. Let's see if Louisiana will go siege this down for me, as it is, uh, it appears as though nobody's moving for that. Hispaniola is, Hispaniola is sieging down this for us. There we go. So there's just Ming and his subjects remaining, some of which we are knocking off. And the others being these colonies, we should gain upon annexation of Ming. Now, obviously, I, I hope that I'm not forgetting anything. But what can you do? I think I've covered all the bases. There's only one way to find out. In the meantime, Waiting for this stuff to core, which will uh, certainly take its sweet, sweet time. All kinds of rebels, that's to be expected. And we have a stupid, cruel ruler who is uh, not helping, but when we are overextended like this in these provinces that have separatism and the many of which are the wrong faith and certainly the uh, unaccepted culture, it's kind of inevitable. That this kind of thing occurs. But it's been a long glorious run boys it's been a long glorious run it's crazy man i still remember the struggle over trying to pu spain and uh, I, rem I remember at the time prior to puing him uh i kind of have a theory that if you are a, a 
uh, Christian um, and you really work for the PUs, you, you'd be pretty unlucky to not get one significant personal union throughout the game. Um, I know some people might disagree and think that, wow, if I think that, I must be so lucky. Um, but, you know, what can I say? It's just my personal opinion with how many games I've played. Um, I think, uh, you know, as you guys will see, uh, I do keep an eye out for them and I do work for them. And I think, no offense to other people, you can, of course, be unlucky. But I think the reason, the main reason that people are not getting PUs is because they're then just not doing a good job keeping their eye out for them and, and doing it quite frankly that's what i used to call fishing for personal unions uh, i personally think if you fish for personal unions you should expect to have like one significant personal union throughout the course of your game or more uh but with that in mind what i was trying to say is that damn dude there's a lot of rebels right now uh i was beginning to think oh man if i balls this up with spain a uh, part of me felt like, considering that one was, I kind of took it for granted because I chose the Detristamar dynasty. I kind of felt like, wow, this is a game where I haven't got into personal union by conventional means. And uh, perhaps if I mess this up, there's going to be no personal unions this game, which is um, in most of my games, like my Roman Empire game, I do get personal unions. So therefore, I kind of work it into the equation that hopefully i'll be getting at least one significant personal union which helps close the gap on, on a world conquest or something like that and uh, the, yeah my long rant is basically to say that i remember thinking oh geez i might not be getting any personal unions here and uh we're a far cry from that now <laughs> as i basically ended up having personal unions coming out of my ears right this game absolutely insane uh, in fact we still have hungary and austria in unions right now and uh there's something that i would like to work on uh, not exactly improve i don't think that's the appropriate word but um i intended to do it with the commonwealth this game if we could get him which we came close to uh, but there's one thing I really like about personal unions, which is underrated uh, to myself personally, and that's that is keeping them independent. Uh, you'll notice that even at this stage of the game, when trying to run a sort of world conquest, um, it doesn't help that we're Catholic and we have the occupation of Rome, etc. But uh, damn, dude, rebels and a half. This is crazy. Uh, Liberty desire is an issue. Now, a personal union does not, it much like revoke privilege, yeah, they do not share liberty desire with other nations. And that's part of the reason that Austria and Hungary are not going to show up here. They're, they're perfectly happy with us. Uh, but they're actually superior. They're not, they don't pay tribute to you, for example. So you could make that argument that they're not as good as other um, subjects. But in of their own right, they are actually superior to just about all other forms of subject because they are very similar to an independent nation. For example, Austria here is uh, empire rank and he's accepting all of his culture group. So if you uh, PU'd any German, for example, you can feed them essentially all of Germany and the personal union does not get a modifier based on development, which is huge compared to a uh, traditional vassal. And they do not share liberty desire with other nations, which is also huge. In other words, as long as you're stronger than them, they're fine. So that is a hugely significant, in my opinion, in the sense of them being independent. And that's something I'd really like to play with. So say, for example, you PU Brittany, you could feed them all of France and they will become essentially France with the same capacity, the same accepted culture, etc. And then you could feed them 
up to their sort of limitations of accepted culture, promoted cultures, and they would promote all of those as well. And then if you got even a little, like say you're playing uh, somebody and you gain Unspark as a personal union, and you could feed them all the way into all of Germany, and they would essentially become Germany as well, which is really interesting. That's really interesting. And it's something I intended to do with the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth has a bad cultural group. That's one of their sort of biggest weaknesses. But it's something that I did intend to do this uh, series. And it's something that I'm determined to do eventually in some way or another. Because, yeah, like I said, they're basically the most superior form of sharing the world in terms of subjects in this game, in my opinion. So I'm a big fan of PUs. I definitely want to do a game where I PU huge swaths of the world and just share the world with them. That's what I'm trying to say. As opposed to integrate them all. You guys will notice that if you've been paying attention in this late game, I mean Hungary and Austria, Austria in particular, has really been contributing, right? Like they're basically stronger than uh, Ming. They have been for the longest time. Which is pretty cool. And I quite like it. Hungary is pretty ugly, but Austria is not. I quite like the idea of feeding a, a nation like that. Like if this was Brittany, Austria. Uh, that's a cool way to divide the world up, in my opinion. So right now, our cause with Ming. Jeez. Taking this sweet time. We're getting eerily near the end date i hope i'm not overlooking anything guys seriously when we go ahead and truce break ming which is my next and final move uh, i'm gonna probably be able to boost my stability by two by the papal influence But I guess also because I already have the World Conquest Achievement, uh, the, technically there's no way to 100% check if you have acquired the achievement. Uh, but we will know. We will know. Let's quickly check the ledger here. Is there anybody who's not our tributary? These are all subjects. French Brazil is a subject. You can tell by the thing. Japan... These are all subjects. So we've got Ming, subjects, objects, subjects. Then there's Ming's subjects, my subjects, Ming subject. Yeah, no, there's there's just Ming and his two colonies. And uh, you do gain control of colonies when you fully annex a nation. So. We should be fine to be sitting around in this manner like I am. I shouldn't stress too badly. I think it's because the... Um, I mean, it's this bloody cruel here, but... These rebels are just crazy. It's a lot of these modifiers as well that we've been getting over time. These rebel factions are just crazy right now. like more of a threat than anything else to this game right now i think uh but it's pretty standard stuff it's causing me to pause the game and slow it down a bit each time okay that's next to a fort Yeah, I just wanted to check there in the ledger to see what's going on because it would be really awkward right now if I'm ticking onwards, doing very little, just waiting for my course to finish, heading towards the end of the game. And uh, then I find out, oops, there's something we forgot there at the end. So I'm at peace now. I still can't abdicate my rule. But to be honest, at this point, losing the one stability would be a bigger hit than anything else. Than the 
admin points that we would gain from that roll. This is what we're waiting on, guys. It would just be preferable to not be at 100% or to be at like, you know, a billion percent, 200, 250 when we uh, go out on this game. Because if we were sitting at like, you know, 300 over extension, I would feel really guilty about not playing the game out because um, some people might rightfully think that we couldn't survive our own instability. But we obviously can. And that's part of the reason I'm playing it a little bit safe. So we did begin to core up some Chinese provinces here. And we're just about to be under 100% overextension. So actually, I'm going to do this in a premeditated manner. This is something that I was, I was prepping to be able to go for these islands. But let's actually go all the way out there. To Hawaii. Now I think he had another island called Midway. Which I'm not exactly sure at a glance where that is. Okay, we're no longer over 100%, which means these rebel factions should not be so large, at least. Be a more manageable size. How are we doing out here? doing just fine all right there it is that's the vast majority of these so we're going to go ahead and use the cb to make sure it's best in terms of um war score cost i did that in the wrong order but that's okay i will do that we've got all the diplo points in the world so, it's time to die, Ming. I'm sorry to say, that's his only fort, I believe, but there's only one way to find out. Now, this should be the final war of this game. Just to reiterate, there are no independent nations apart from myself and Ming. And, uh... By declaring on Ming, we could see that he only has two subjects. Which are both his colonial nations. Wow, we took his fort in one month. That's cool to see. And um, his colonial nations should be acquired by fully annexing him, right? So let's check this. I want to check. Now we've got above 10%. I hate that. I hate that. God dang it. Let's check to see if we found each of his provinces. God, that makes it so difficult. Hopefully it's this, but we'll, we'll find out. So firstly, there's no modifier for any fort yet. That's not their full annexation. Uh, you can't exactly go down the list uh, without being tedious because... Um, of his colonies vassalizing him is not an option despite having the slots because his subjects will not be our subjects and we, are, we don't have the time to integrate him before the end of the game so where on earth does he own it's three percent meaning that it's probably only a couple provinces now i remember mid That's its own island, okay? That's him. 
Yes. Nice. That's full annexation. There's no modifier for Fort, so he doesn't own it. Oh, thank goodness. I actually uh, recall when I went down the list previously a province called Midway, which I knew was an island. I, I couldn't spot it there. It is actually quite small and it's quite zoomed down. Uh, but I actually thought, well, maybe it's part of... Um, one of his colonies has it or something. But that's Ming, that's all of Ming. I'm really happy to say because often trying to fully annex a nation like this, it can be very tedious, especially when they have the colonies and then you can't really find the colonies. So it's perfectly fine in terms of war, war score. That's easy. He's now unenthused. Let's make sure to hit up these islands. Just in case my other navy struggles to fight Ming's navy here, whatever it is. I'm just going to come out. And we might not need to do everything. It wouldn't surprise me. Right now he's got two provinces unoccupied, or three. One of which is being occupied currently. So guys, uh, I'm happy to say that this is actually soon the end of this episode and the end of this entire series where we have conquered the world on Jerusalem. I just want to finish this war out to make sure that we have not actually missed anything. There it is. Your full annexation. The end of the Ming Empire. Sweet. Now. We are the only independent nation. We own Ming Mexico. So there we go. I think that qualifies the only way that you can be the only independent nation and not conquer the world is if you have a tributary. Because they don't count. But as you guys can see, we do not have any tributaries and there are no independent nations in the world. Um, not even 100% overextended. So, that's it. We did it. Wow. Wow, we done did it, fam. We done did it. It was a crazy game. Uh, it was a long game. It could certainly be, it could have been a lot more attractive, a lot more smooth of a game. I did, uh, I'm going to be 100% real with you guys. One thing I really wanted to do for the funsies was actually take uh, maritime ideas. Now consider that I think our fourth idea was exploration, which we've since gotten rid of. I wanted to take maritime ideas. And I wanted to have huge navies everywhere, smashing everybody, doing everything. Um, I did play a Knights game in the past where I was like, wow, this rating is just ridiculous. But the, in that Knights game, I actually flipped to Orthodox. And due to that, I was able to raid all of Europe. Now that, in my opinion, is by far the way to go. And because Europe has the high de dev provinces all around Italy and so on, it is really beneficial to do that. Unfortunately, it is way better. But what you cannot do is form Jerusalem. You cannot form Jerusalem as an Orthodox nation, which was our intention, Deus fault all the way. So I didn't do that. And that was part of the reason as well as sometimes you can just find yourself in a rut, you know, where you're barely hanging on. And then you spend money you don't have to survive and to quote unquote prosper. And it just, you can't get yourself out of that rut. We certainly found ourselves in that position. As you guys recall, we were at some point we were raiding with a tiny little fleet, which was only giving us a little portion of the money. 
in some cases none at all where they they were uh protecting from pirates uh so it was certainly unglamorous it's not what i expected i expected to use the knight's traditions to steal people's ships and go maritime ideas and just raid the hell out of everything and have a huge monstrous navy um one of my favorite things about maritime ideas is it allows your navy to repair in coastline provinces so you don't have to dock them uh yeah it was certainly sloppy in some ways guys but it was crazy in others and uh, we are jerusalem and we have conquered the entire world so mission successful theoretically going into the future we can integrate everything into one unified nation if that's what we will or we could uh release nations throughout the world but gg guys gg that's it we, we should enforce religion on some of these fools and obviously it would be a spiritual one faith going into the future as well as we uh there's nothing stopping us from converting anything hmm what is that though negative two shouldn't make the difference it's recently converted no it's it's uh trading companies they're in trading companies let's just check it's in a trading company that's my call where are you at i didn't see it Tongrin. there it's in a trading company right what no okay it is religious zeal but it doesn't show you yeah i was like what it's obviously recently converted province that's why we can't convert it but then you look at the modified what now it shows me what ah i was looking at that a second ago yeah okay so these are just recently converted provinces which makes sense um we could theoretically just convert the whole world up if we had the time uh but i'm ranting now guys it was a long series i enjoyed it a lot it gets really rough and tedious at certain points i'm sorry towards the end i there were periods where i was busy and i lacked the motivation to actually pump them out uh on a daily basis guys um but for the most part i did for the most part it's been like 80 days plus of pumping out videos every day i hope that you guys enjoyed it because that's what makes it worth it guys and uh gg i hope those of you who uh do watch uh to learn something uh did in fact learn something but um we did it fam we did it this is where we began and we ended up with the whole world as the knights of Rhodes. sweet thanks for watching guys i'll see you in a future uh series or production thanks see you then